Hey everybody, if you tuned in, um, we're just getting ready to start and we're, we're watching a little video that Kelly has made of the member show. Um, so that's what you're looking at and it'll just take a minute or two and then it'll be over. Just so you know, it originally did have some music accompaniment to it, but um, we had to um, take that out only because we weren't sure of copyright issues. And I'm not going to hum along to it, so. Sweet. Thanks, Kelly. So I'd just like to welcome everybody um, who's here. I can't see who's here, but I'm assuming that all of my attendees are here. And um, this is our first ever webinar that we've held. Um, it is the first part of two. The next one will be next Friday. And we just wanted to give an opportunity to some of our archived artists who are part of our members show this year to show you some of their work from home, um, perhaps show you their studios, whatever is most comfortable for them. Um, I think I'd like to just say a couple words about the way this webinar will work for you. If you are attending, uh, you will be muted and you will, we will not be able to see you as attendees. Uh, you will be able to see in little squares our participants, and then as each participant presents to you, you will be able to see them on full screen. Um, you can control some things from your computer at home, so I think it's probably a good idea to keep it on full screen so you can get a, a great uh, picture of everyone. Um, I would like to introduce our staff to you and myself, if you don't know who I am. I'm Mindy Towsley. I'm the director of the Artist Archives of the Western Reserve, and I will be your host tonight for this webinar. Um, our, as co-host, uh, our staff, who is Megan Elves. Megan is our marketing and program manager, and Kelly Pontoni, who is our collections registrar, and I'm trying to unmute you guys so that you can say something, but I seem to not be able to do that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Yeah. So glad to have everyone here today. And it looks like we have already 39 attendees that have signed on and rising. So welcome everyone, and be sure to use your Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions and put the artist's name in the question. At the very end, I will say the name and ask the artist the question for you with my very own mouth so there's no chatting. So thank you so much, and here's Kelly to say hello. Hello, I'm, I'm so excited about this. This is, um, we had a little rehearsal the other night and it, it's very exciting. So um, like Mindy said, this is our, first time doing this and hopefully there won't be too many snacks. <laughs> there, pr there probably will be some glitches so uh, just bear with us. Um, uh, we don't have a great technological staff to back us up so we're, we're pretty much winging it for tonight. Everybody is. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody about the members show. We have created a videotape of the exhibition which you can see on our Facebook page and also on our website. Um, we're also posting pictures from the show on Facebook and Instagram, and we are still asking people to vote for their 
their favorite piece in the show because we are still planning on giving out awards for this show. And uh, the show is going to remain up in the archives gallery, even though it's not accessible to the public right now. We are hoping that um, hopefully by June we will be able to open up to the public. Um, of course, we're going to follow all the mandates that the governor sets out for us, but you know, we're, we're just going to keep our fingers crossed about that. Um, I'd like to introduce our, our panelists that are going to present for you tonight. I'll unmute them so they can say hi to you, and then um, we're going to go one at a time. Um, so um, uh, we have Herb Asherman here. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. Looks like a lot of fun. We have Terry Klausman. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, event here. Hope we have some fun. And George Kokar. Hi, everybody. And next is Gloria Plevin. Oh, I'm having a hard time unmuting Gloria. She goes. Yeah. There you go. Okay, say hi, Gloria. Hmm. Gloria? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. I just wanted to make sure you were on. And last but not least is Judy Takish. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Hello, everybody. Okay, how are we doing on attendees, Megan? Is everybody in? We got 47, it looks like. 47, okay. So we have 84 people sh uh, signed up. So um, I don't want to delay too long because we only have a few minutes for each artist to present. So I think we're going to get started. Um, our idea. first artist up tonight is going to be Herb Asherman. And I'm just going to take a minute and mute everybody except Herb. And Herb, you can start. Hi there, everyone. This is called What I Did on My Corin Staycation. And as all of you know, we've been home and we've been very, very busy. One of the first things I did was to go into my darkroom and look at the thousands and thousands of files that I have of work which I have either printed or will never print again. This is a black and white negative. I eliminated 2,000 of these negatives by hand. I went through 500 or 600 files. I threw out the work that I would never want seen or when I move on to the great archive in the sky, somebody else would have to deal with. So I saved the, the issue and I have a stack that's literally about two feet tall in the darkroom of these negatives. So you're gonna ask, what do you do with an eight by 10 negative? Well. I have been a platinum printer for many, many years, and platinum printing is a process by which we coat the negative by hand and then place, coat the paper by hand with a solution of platinum and place the negative over it, expose it to ultraviolet light, and make a print. So there is my aunt on her 91st birthday, and these are portraits of a family that I did a couple months ago and finally got to printing, if you can see them there. So I spent a great deal of time catching up and making up and covering up and sorting up and organizing and actually physically printing. I haven't been behind a camera in several months on account of the fact that I can't leave the house and there's no one to photograph. The dogs have gotten tired of bottling. So I went back into the files and just did all the work that I had to do. As a matter of fact, I have archive work that it was in the files that have to be printed up. So we printed up portraits of many of the artist archives in addition to the ones that I have to shoot. There's Augusto. I hope you can see these are in his gallery and a beautiful portrait of artist archive Jeanette Paulson. So I have a list of artists that I have to photograph, I have a list of artists that I have to print, and I started working on those to get those done in a timely manner. In addition to which, as many of you know, I am the director of the Cleveland Photo Fest. That's our official Cleveland Photo Fest face mask, in case you want one there. They also serve as a lens cleaning cloth, a very, very, very high utility item here. And 
we have postponed all of our activities from this year, September, October, into the spring of next year. We have organized what we call Photothon 20, which is now Photothon 21, which is a 4,000 foot gallery that will host five shows simultaneously. Uh, international photographers uh, in five different themes, five different approaches, with the hopes that we can hang about 250 photographs and or, and here's a secret, I'm not supposed to say this yet, but I'm going to, just don't tell anybody. The Cleveland Photo Fest has been sanctioned by the Guinness Book of World Records to hold one million selfies. We are going to try to maintain and launch the world's largest photography exhibition next spring. You'll all be getting notices about that. So save up all those selfies uh, that you've been taking of yourself sitting around the house in your, your PJs and your, uh, your um, uh, sweatpants. So in closing, I'll be brief. Our motto for the Photo Fest is unity through photography, but we've rewritten our motto to say community through photography. We're here with you. I'm one of you. You're certainly part of us. And we all look forward to having you participate in our activities in the future, as well as, obviously, if you need a portrait photographer, I'm available. Thank you very, very much. Lots of fun. Thanks, Herb. That was great. Um, I just um, I want to say again to the audience, if you have questions for the artists, there is at the bottom of your screen a little thing that says Q&A. You can type in questions while this webinar is going on. Um, I would ask that you please preface the questions with the name of the artist that the question is directed to. So this way when you're watching an artist, if you have questions, you can type it out. You don't have to remember it later. And then at the end of the program, Megan is going to ask the artist the different questions. There also will be, um, a feature called upvoting questions. So if it's a general question for all the artists, put general in front of it. And if you see a question in there that you really want to ask also and somebody else asked it first, just put a thumbs up on it and upvote it. And then it'll get two votes for that question going to the top of the queue to be asked. So I think we're gonna start with our next artist who is Gloria Plevin. Um, Gloria is in her home. She is going to show us some beautiful prints and some beautiful work that she's done on Chautauqua in her home. So Gloria, it's your turn. Take it away, girl. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks I like Gloria's you, video can you froze. Hear me? We can, can you hear, hear you. Me? Yep. Okay, you're on, Gloria. You can Okay. First I want to welcome you to my home in Shaker Heights, Ohio, near the famous Shaker Square Shopping Center. But then I need to tell you that most of my art making takes place near downtown Cleveland in a big, wonderful old building called the Art Craft Building at Superior and 25th Street. So then moving along, I'm going to show you artwork that's in my home. Are you hearing me okay? We can hear you, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay, so am I gonna get up? Yeah, no, no, you don't have to get up, just talk, talk, tell about your prints. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be showing you are some actual prints that I made a few years ago. I think she's frozen. My new interest. And this is a book and uh, that I've made. Gloria, Gloria, can you hear me, Mimi? Can you guys hear me, please? Uh, we lost you on video and your bandwidth is really low. So I think we're gonna skip to another artist and then come back to you. 
Um, I'm going to ask Kelly, maybe you could call them and see if you can get them back on for us. And let's go to the next artist, who is Judy Takish. Mm -hmm. Hi, Judy. Hi. Am I back? You're in. Am I, am I on now? You're on now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So for me, Corona season basically began when my kids got sent home from school. They were both, two of them were in college and they both got sent home to do their online studies. Um, then the next thing that happened, the big thing that happened with Corona season is that my show, which is currently right now at my Chicks with Balls show, which is currently at the Zanesville Museum of Art. Um, it opened, that was wonderful. It opened in February, February 13th, had a you know wonderful opening, um, but then the museum closed. So basically, thanks to you know Zoom technology, we are in the gallery right now because I did the virtual backdrop, which is why my hands are, you know, being all funky. Um, but we're in the gallery right now, which it, the show looked absolutely gorgeous and it's, everything's there safe and sound just, you know, for the security guards that, uh, that come through. So, but thanks to, um, oh, oh, actually what, one of the things that I, so I was able to give my first gallery talk there, um, which went really well. And um, one of the things that was supposed to happen before the museum closed was that I was supposed to give my second gallery talk. My second gallery talk, the subject was Beyond Chicks with Balls, The Goddess Project. Um, but when the museum closed, I couldn't give that gallery talk. So the uh, director actually asked me if I would do it via Facebook Live from my home and studio. And um, after I, at first I was like, uh oh, no, I don't want to get into all video stuff like that. But Facebook Live could not have been easier. It really, it's like one button on your phone um, when you're in Facebook. So I felt a little bit more comfortable with it. Also, I had my home-based film crew because my two sons that were home, one is a film major and one is a computer science major. So, and they were home doing online schooling so I could rope them into helping me do that, um, that, that video. So I did that as a Facebook Live event where I basically gave them, put on a little sort of a artist docent tour um, through my home and studio talking about my various goddess project paintings and I walked people through through my studio. I invited people into my home, which right now I'm going to do through the magic of Facebook. I'm sorry, through the magic of Zoom. <laughs> um, so basically, oh, and right now I've got the thing that I was trying to avoid, that big sunlight beam is, um, is focusing right on my painting back there. But anyway, so I invited people into my home to, to do this little virtual docent tour of my art, you know, fr from, the, from the Goddess Project. And I had so much fun doing it, it um, I decided to make it a regular thing, like where every Thursday night, it, it kicked off on a Thursday night at six o'clock. And so I thought every Thursday night, why not do just like a smaller scope thing, you know, just like a little snippet every Thursday night, six o'clock, Facebook Live, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which that I had to keep remembering because, you know, now people all over the country and all over the world could watch it. So I had to remember it was Eastern Standard Time. And I decided to call it Living Figuratively. And instead of really talking just about my art, which I do talk about it, um, my art in the, you know, in the show, I also wanted to basically show people how to live with figurative art. Figurative art is like my thing that I love. It's sort of the, you know, the best, I think it's, I think it's the best, most wonderful, wonderful type of art. And that's what I enjoy the most. And I wanted it to be a little bit of um, a interior decorating show, like where I showed people art from my collection as well as my own art and how I hang it all over the place. Because the, 
the bottom line is so many people in Cleveland say things like, why would I hang a painting in my house of somebody that I don't know? And that's the whole thing with figurative art is you're always hanging people you don't know, but they're fascinating. They're interesting. It's like, I, I basically want us to use the show to um, show people how they can live with figurative art and love it. And my tagline is um, living figuratively, the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? So I did, you know, I started this little show. One of the fun things that I'm, that I'm doing with the show is I'm throwing in a little 1960s TV show references because I call it a TV show. That's sort of my age group, you know, frame of reference. Um, so I, you know, I call it a TV show and I throw little, little references into it. And um, I also have a, uh, a pledge where any art that gets sold because of this show, and I always put it onto my online shop after I talk about it, but any art that gets sold because of this show, I'm donating 50% of the profits into the struggling art community. Not necessarily donating it, sometimes donating it, sometimes paying it forward by purchasing art, by you know, helping nonprofits that are struggling, helping models that don't have modeling jobs now. Um, so living figuratively was one of the things that hatched during the Corona time. The other thing though, which I am still, you know, I'm still working and my home is in my studio, which I am absolutely thrilled about because I don't, it, it really didn't change my exact life very much because every day I go up to my studio with my cup, you know, with my coffee pot and everything. And, and I work there. And so that's the exact same thing that I did. Now, you know, I have my kids home, so that, that changes things. But I continue to work. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to show you what it was that I've been working on. Yeah, let's make sure that that that's lined up nicely. I think so. Okie doke. All right. So basically, before, before I, um, before all the Corona stuff happened, I had, I, when I see a model that I like for a photo shoot, um, and that I get and inspired by, I might have, I will have her come over to my uh, home and studio for a photo shoot. Um, one of the models that I absolutely love and I've been working on um, her paintings of her right now is El Cata. And she has a Facebook page and an Instagram page and all this stuff. And she's, she's awesome. One of the things that I absolutely love about her and that totally struck me right from the beginning is that she looks like a Greek or Roman or Renaissance sculpture. Her face and figure, in fact, I'm going to bring over, I'm going to bring you my, uh, bring you my little piece to Milo here. I feel like her face, and hopefully this shows, her face looks like Greek sculpture, like iconic Renaissance classical sculpture. Um, she, we had her pose for our uh, Drawing to the Valley uh, drawing group at the Valley Art Center, and she took on this this pose that looked very much like the David from, you know, Michelangelo's David. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, you know, I'm going to use her for my goddess project. And what I did was I had her come over and pose for me for, um, for basically for these two paintings right here from the goddess project. Um, I, what I'm doing with it is that, uh, I've had, I have her pose as the Michelangelo's David, only a female David that is taking down the patriarchy. And that's my, that's my whole thing with the uh, American, American flag. And so I have her pose with a flag banner. It's not actually a flag. Does it look okay to you? Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, all right. My, uh, my, film, my film crew, I, I, my, uh, I got pushed up one earlier, so that's why. Um, your, uh, your video's frozen a little bit, Judy. <laughs> I 
Okay, it looks like we've now lost Judy on the um, <laughs> on this broadcast. So, so we're kind of getting down there to artists. They're dropping out one by one. Um, so I, I think we'll move to the next person, and then we're just gonna uh, maybe, maybe we I've been try. told that I believe Gloria Plevin is ready. Is that okay. correct? Okay, let's go back to Gloria. Okay, I'm gonna unmute you, Gloria, and you can start again. <laughs> Will that work for you, Gloria? Will you be? Are you ready to go? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, okay you're up, Gloria. It's so nice to see you again. <laughs> Just to explain your book. Show your book. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I think my internet blinked out. Um, so Judy, we've we've gone back to Gloria for the moment. <laughs> since you're in the we'll switch back to you. <laughs> are, are you going to come back to me, or can I get a glass of wine now? <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Gloria. Okay. Well, and this is uh, welcome to show business. <laughs> We're in show business. Oh, it's not coming. In. And this is my book that I have made recently. Uh, it's a lot about my life. My artwork is a lot about my life. And part of my life it has been for 50 years living in Chautauqua, New York in the summertime. And out of that, I was able to make what I consider a very beautiful painting. And I would like to show that to you right behind me. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit about it. It's called A Walk in the Woods. A walk in our winter woods was almost magical. It was a path upwards to follow where fallen dark brown tree trunks had been cut up with some logs carted away to be fuel and others left to shelter animals. The path was quiet with a beautiful white stillness, a stillness when no turkeys were about and the deer were hiding somewhere else. Far up the hill was a makeshift log bench where one could sit, look out, and see down to the winding Chautauqua Gorge. Our black standard poodle Charlie might bark at a squirrel, and one might be reminded of a walk in the woods of West Virginia, which is where I grew up. And now I'm going to show you another painting. And this one is my most recent painting. It's a portrait of my granddaughter, Katie. And, <clears throat> and at that time, I had a dog named Sammy. So the two of them are sitting. Uh, it's my first winter indoors scene. And I'm going to read a little bit about it. Today I experienced a quiet but joyful feeling of accomplishment. Katie's portrait is my first and only evening interior. There have been problems to overcome, but in the final hours, each difficulty was resolved, and it all came to an exciting conclusion. The colors are subdued or brilliant. The design is fresh, and Katie looks directly at me with a lovely smile. With his gray, black, and white schnauzer coat, Sammy sits right in the middle of the couch, looking inscrutable. The final touch, the color of the cloth on the red chest in the foreground, is a gold pigment, which actually glistens. It is fun. It is night. The orange flowers Kate holds on her lap cast warm highlights on her young, pretty face. The entire composition is exquisite. So, I want to thank you for coming and looking. And if you'd like to uh, know more, uh, you can call me or come to my studio downtown. Thanks, Gloria. I'm sorry we didn't get to see the beautiful Chautauqua prints, too. Um, so I think we'll try going back to Judy. It looks like she's back on again. I was here the whole time. I have the camera set up to, to the new place, but I had to go back to the laptop to watch it. So, I wasn't gone. 
I was, it's just my camera is in a different place than my laptop. But, so I'm, I'm on now? You're on. Okay, all right. So anyway, I was talking about taking down the patriarchy. All right. Um, basically, I, these two David, uh, Michelangelo's David paintings, I cast David as a woman, my model who has this classic Renaissance beauty. Um, and I have many references to one of my uh, things that I do for my activism. Last summer, I was doing this quite a bit. I was attaching a lot of um, pro-choice messages to hangers and then taking them down to Columbus, to the state house, and hanging them on the fence posts and hanging them on statues and hanging them on the cannons and hanging them on different different things. And I would wire them into place so that it was harder to, for them to take them away. I'm not sure how long they stayed up, but this was kind of what you know I was doing for my uh, pro-choice activism last summer when there were all kinds of things like the gag orders and then the, uh, the heartbeat bill. So I, with Elle's permission, because I was changing it, the painting to a pro-choice painting, um, I made, I have references to various hangers and um, also the, you know, American flag. And um, basically I, these, these are part of my goddess project and, um, and I loved, I've been loving painting her because she, you know, I have so much nice reference and she just has this classic, classic beauty. Uh, so essentially that's what I've been working on. I'm actually, I have another one on deck with also using the same model because I was just sort of in the mindset of, of, um, of painting Elle. And, uh, and I think, I think that that is about it. You know, like I'll, I, as long as Corona times keep going on, I'm going to be doing the living figuratively every Thursday night at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And um, thank you all. Thank you all for joining me. I, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks, Judy. That was great. I love those paintings and I love your activism. I had no idea you were doing that with the hangers. That's fabulous. <laughs> so uh, we're going to move to George Kokar now. Um, George, I'm going to unmute you, and you can take us through your studio. Hello, everybody. George Kokar here. Uh, I uh, moved into this studio, uh, our house, I uh, had the studio built five years ago. Um, and every morning, I, I go to my studio, and I walk through my data dead uh, collection hallway here. There's actually a hallway that is actually a laundry room, and storage space and all my data did collection in here. There's a lot of Nina Van Hearn work in here and uh, quite a few other artists, Marvin Jones, uh, Dan Bijou, Tony Sierra. Head into my studio. Uh, my studio is about 400 square feet and um, as you can see, I filled it with lots of books and lots of art. I've been collecting artwork now since 1987 uh, and accumulated a, a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I keep adding more and more. But uh, every wall is filled. It's organized clutter in here. Um, I don't know where everything is. That's about everything that really counts. Okay. Now, did enough this painting them to talk about. Okay. Yeah. I did that 10 times, I never did that. But, um, so right now, talk about painting. I started painting at the end of January and uh, before you knew anything about the, the virus. Uh, as you see, it's the Wizard of Oz, the painting's titled, The Tin Man Steps Out. And uh, uh, besides the obvious characters, the, the Carly Lion, the Tin Man, and Scarecrow, um, 
I also added these different kinds of abstract elements, uh, these drip paintings. I've been doing a lot of stuff with these drips, and then these drips come down, uh, and uh, you can see two rings fall, and also did a lot of uh, dots, kind of like a pop art kind of thing, and almost like process art too. And so there are a lot of abstract expression uh, techniques in this painting, uh, here and there, and in, 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 the, in the background with the woods. And um, so it's more than just a painting about the Wizard of Oz and the, the characters. It's more about um, different levels of being an artist. And, uh, um, and if you can imagine the artist as a, a metaphor, the, the characters in this painting as a metaphor for art, artists, uh, is what I was thinking about. Like, Carter Lyon, you have to be brave to be become an artist. I mean, uh, it takes a, a lot of time, a lot of work, and a lot of people don't make it as artists and, and have a hard time continuing to be an artist. I mean, it's a, a tough job. It's like actors, um, musicians, it's, um, it takes money. I've been very lucky, been very lucky, been an artist for pretty much since I got out of, uh, out of college. I got jobs and uh, made a living as an artist. Uh, the Scarecrow, they're attacked by his flying monkeys. The flying monkeys are critics attacking them. So you get this feedback, these people are scaring you. The Tin Man, the Tin Man, look for, for heart. Uh, art has heart. Art, it has to have it's a passion art to become an artist. And so he's going on this journey, the old brick road here, uh, towards Oz, uh, actually towards his career. And uh, and uh, confident, he's stepping out. But as you see, the pitfall here is if I really step on a banana peel, and it might fall down. So it's an entire career can backtrack. You don't know what's going to happen with your career, just like this virus. Just don't know what's going to happen. Right now, I'm like six, seven shows. My work's at, but nobody can see it. And unless they stuff like this online. So, uh, you just don't know. You just don't know. Uh, show you another thing. Can you get this out of the way? Now this one, um, called Mad About Monk. Now this is actually my second version of Mad About Monk. Uh, and I started this uh, probably mid-March. Uh, uh, I was still working on, on the, the Tin Man. And I usually work on six, seven paintings at a time, maybe more. You have small ones, big ones, medium-sized ones. And I started doing the Man About Monk, because I wanted to do another version of the Man About Monk painting. And this time, uh, I have a monk guy that's in a chair, wearing a, a scream mask, he's wearing a scream t-shirt. And uh, behind him is this, uh, this weird scene that monk painted, and a uh, landscape, a weird landscape. And uh, up there, you have, uh, the voice of the was uh, painted by Monk. And uh, of course we have a, a screen lamp and uh, have a cat down here. He's got a little mu a mask on, a little Monk mask. Uh, so, yeah, this chair he's sitting in, if you if know Monk at all, there's a, a painting called uh, the, Between the Clock and the, and the Bed and the Clock, about the Clock and the Bed, and which is, Talks about his mortality. And uh, so was, he's in his chair and uh, kind of represents the, his mortality, everybody's mortality, actually. And while I was doing this painting, um, I, did, I did this small painting here that uh, um, I call it the Screen 2020. And uh, see, people are wearing masks. This is when people just started wearing masks. And, um, and so the anxiety, uh, you don't, again, uncertainty of uh, what's going to happen. And, uh, yes, okay. Since Lori, I give myself a plug. I also have a book out too, Gone to Find Banana. And you can just buy Amazon Books. So if you want, this the only one I'm actually making now is uh, some of these books on Amazon. So, Goes to Amazon Books. It's got a fine banana, George Kokar. 
Thank you. Okay, thanks, George. That was great. Um, I love the I love the metaphor of the artist as the Tin Man because you got to have heart. That's fabulous. I think. Um, so um, I think Terry is up next. Terry, we're gonna, we're gonna do you next. Let me unmute. How you doing? Can you see me there? We yep, we can see you, and you can. And, uh, talk. Attendees can actually join the chat at the bottom. There is an icon called chat, and if you select all panelists and attendees, you can talk about all the great content you're watching while you're watching it. So, side note. Now, Terry. All right. Thanks, Megan. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my studio. Um, this is my tenth year being a professional artist, and this is my third uh, incarnation of a studio. And I just moved into this place uh august and it's kind of a work in progress i'm not quite done with it yet but uh, let's see what uh what i've got here all right now how do i make this big now oh well <laughs> i'm gonna have to wing it here so sorry folks so now this is the sculpture area um as i come around here Boy, I'm looking at a tiny screen, folks. <laughs> uh, and um, this is where I make my sculpture. And I do like to, to make it home, uh, very homey. And uh, through the years, I've collected things that are very important to me in uh, moments of my life, uh, bowling, racing, uh, of course, my art. Uh, this stuff here is all all materials that will be made into to art, hopefully someday, eventually. Uh, through two moves now, I've been able to edit out uh, kind of the junky stuff, which I would think, and then kind of kept the quote unquote cool stuff. Um, assemblages, uh, I, I, I'm not an artist that uh, you would say is just a draftsman or sculptor. Um, I just like to make stuff, uh, be it uh, the steel, uh, colored pencil, uh, found object, or fuzzy lint out of pom poms, or whatever. Um, I wanted to separate uh, my sculpture area from my drawing area, and so I put my little island of uh, uh, my flat files and so forth. I like history. Um, I like to collect uh, moments in my life and preserve. I guess I like to hang on to things a little bit too much. Um, but uh, uh, I have an installation here of Rupel's Art and Paint, the last mom and pop uh, art supply store in the city of Akron. Um, so here, um, I call this Canceled by Corona. It was my uh, show at the Little Box Gallery in Akron at Summit Art Space. It was to be in April. Um, and it got canceled. So it was, it was a very small space. So it only took a few pieces. But uh, the work was to represent my um, growth as an artist from uh, when I first started at Summit Art Space. The gallery is right across the hall from where my studio was. And uh, pretty much that was my education uh, through all the wonderful people and artists that I met at Summit Art Space. Now, these are all original colored pencil drawings, Prismacolor on arches or uh, archival paper. I also had sculpture uh, that was going to be part of the show. This is stainless steel and steel called Penetration. And uh, I have on display just uh, all artwork I've done through the years. This is a part that's unfinished over here. Uh, this is gonna be my Rudolph's Revenge booth. And I just have uh, the uh, 
<laughs> the tongue of the trailer sticking out so far, but uh, plans are there's gonna be something pretty cool behind that black curtain there. Uh, I'll take you over here to my drawing area where I'll show you the latest drawing that I have. And I apologize, I'm gonna try to get a good shot at it, but I didn't wanna take a chance pinning it up or anything. Let's see here. So this is called Sequestered, um, totally inspired by the current situation. It's, uh, I guess my first attempt of combining my larger line, the very colorful line you see there with uh, my very fine uh, uh, barbed wire type of line and then um, separating it from another layer in the, the background. It's, it's kind of in the line of uh, <clears throat> I guess in the next version after that. Peter, you got to get him out of there. So I guess that should uh, wrap it up then, Mindy. <laughs> Is that the high sign? Oh, no, sorry. I unmuted myself and the cat was doing something off in the corner. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Very um, unprofessional. I, I love that last drawing that you did, Terry. That's great. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, so well, that, that's a good break off point, I guess. We can go to question and answer, I guess. Thank you yeah. very much for giving me a chance to show my studio. So I think I'm going to unmute everybody um, and Megan um, can uh, field some questions. I know we have some questions on there, not too many, but a few. And um, if there's any if there's any other time left and anybody has more that they'd like to say about their work, uh, we can do that too. So we've got a few minutes you left. Want to see them? How are you? I don't see you. <laughs> okay, Megan, you're you're on. Questions? I'm gonna there we go. I unmuted yeah. myself. So um, again, we are still taking questions. So if anybody has any questions to ask, I see we have 43 attendees, which is amazing. Go ahead and click the QA button on the bottom of your screen, and then you'll be able to answer them. One we do have uh, is for Herb, our first presenter, which was, Herb, what is the advantage of, pl of printing in platinum? Many, and that was but, by but uh, I Irving wanna, Kushner. I wanna talk to Klausner for a minute. I have photographed over 200 uh, artists in location and that has got to be, there's something wrong with you because that has got to be the neatest studio I have ever seen in my entire career. That's right. No yeah. artist works like that. I mean, that's really OCD. To answer the question, and it's, yes. it's gorgeous work. Gorgeous. A standard, yes. a standard black and white <laughs> photograph in my tradition, I don't do anything digitally. These are all from negatives. So a standard black and white photograph is taken from a negative, which is put in an enlarger, it's blown up, it's printed on a sheet of silver gelatin paper, which is then processed. This takes about an hour start to finish or so through the different trays. And the silver gelatin is a coating on the paper itself. So you buy it pre-made and you uh, make your exposures and you process your prints. A platinum print, it works on many different levels. First of all, to make a platinum print, you have to have a negative the size of the print you're working with because it's a contact process. You hand coat the photograph with platinum, literal, this is platinum, with real platinum, with real palladium. You dry it, you go take the negative, put it on top of the exposure, the emulsion, put it under ultraviolet light, black light, and then develop it. And if this print is two hours start to finish. Whoa. The beauty of the print is that it's virtually indelible. It's pure metal, pure platinum embedded in the fibers of the paper. So we are used to saying that a platinum print, silver gelatin, 100, 150 years, platinum, two to three to 400 years. Obviously, no one's been around long enough to find out exactly how much, but the anticipation is that the process, the beauty of the process 
is that this image will outlast the paper that it's on. Mm. I am one of two or three people in the city that do, does this. I'm one of a dozen in the entire country that does this on demand as a commercial product of my portraiture as opposed to just fine art. Platinum print. Nice. That is, you were ready for that one too. I could tell. I was ready for that. <laughs> So I got one next for Judy, for Judy Takis. Um, mm -hmm. It was, yep. Judy, could you please take a minute and talk about your online shop? Please and thank you, Barbara Martin. Yes. Yes. My Well, I can talk more about my online show. It's called Living Figuratively every two, Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, each, t each time I do the show, I keep putting my glasses on because I want to see myself. <laughs> um, each time I do the show, I take you to a different part of my house. Um, sometimes it's in my studio, like if I'm talking about a couple paintings, like for instance, the paintings that are behind me right now are from my Chicks with Balls series. My most recent um, show, I talked about Chicks with Balls paintings and how these particular ones came about. Um, because it was kind of a crazy posing session where we had live chickens and things like that. Uh, you'll have to watch that actual show. They're all actually, after I do them on Facebook Live, they're all, um, I upload them to YouTube um, just so that they're kind of in a permanent place with a permanent link and you don't have to be on Facebook to see them. But I've done, um, I did one episode where it was a wall full of small. So it's like, it was on my staircase and where I have, you know, small figurative work sort of arranged in a pleasing manner, kind of a salon style kind of a thing. And basically just showing people how they can decorate their homes with figurative art. Like it, just like you would put up abstracts, just like you'd put up um, landscapes and still lifes, you can do the same thing with figurative art. So really, my show is is geared not so much to artists, but to regular people um, to get them to buy figurative art. And actually, this is my, my enunciation, which always gets me on camera. So in addition to the show, there was mention of an online shop. S -H -O. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's on Bad um, Megan. I did not pronounce my words, but the show's good too. Oh, di oh, oh, oh! Did you want me to talk about the online shop? Shop? Yes. And then I'm like, it was like, like a typo, like a verbal typo. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Verbal. So yeah, did, will you tell us about your online, the online shop? The online shop is just on my website. Okay. So I on my website, I have an online shop, and as I talk about pieces every every week like I'll talk about one two three or five or whatever paintings of mine and I will put them on the online shop so that you can just go right there buy buy it with the click of the click of the mouse and um and one of the things that I did with the online shop last week I did this cryptic little reference to a 1960s tv show and everybody was wondering, you know, what was that from? What was that from? The only person that guessed it was my sister because she watched every single 1960s TV show along with me because we had one TV and there it was in the living room. Um, but what I did was I put the, the theme song that it came from on my online shop as one of the items. It's free. You can just listen to it. But like it sort of makes people go to the online shop to find out the, find out the answer. I don't know if I'm going to be able to think of a tricky one every week because, you know, but <laughs> I did for that. I did for that one time, but yeah, it's on my website. Oh man, I want to see that. Right. <laughs> and then that's my next one actually is for Gloria, for Gloria Plevin. So let me unmute you, Gloria. Let's see. No, one second. Did we get Gloria unmuted? I got it. Oh, perfect. Hey, Gloria, I have a question for you. Um, the question yeah. is, yes, yeah, so the question is from Kendra Collins, Gloria. Do you paint off of a photo or a memory? I don't paint from memory. Okay. If I'm painting a flower, I have the flower right in front of me. And if I'm painting a scene, I take a lot of photographs because I don't like to paint out of doors. And so I have, I have uh, real references about everything, and uh, thanks to Kendra. But I have something I want to add 
to the conversation. My new book, Gloria Plevin, Art and Essays, has a lot about uh, my work and also lots of photographs. And you can't see it, but I have a photograph. Try to show it. I've tried to show it. But okay. Uh, can you see it? Can you possibly see it? It's the photo that her, uh, Herb did of mom and her with her other dog, Charlie. Can you see it? Yes, can you we see can. This? It's beautiful. And so the thing that's exciting about it is that this was several years ago. So this was my dear dog who died several years ago. There's a bit of my husband's portrait there who did all, is also gone. And, uh, and, and so, uh, and I don't have that color hair anymore. <laughs> but anyhow, it's very precious. And my book is just full of wonderful moments like that. So I hope that uh, people will be uh, interested to check out my book and uh, might enjoy it very much. And it's, uh, it, can, it can be bought from Loganberry Books, which is doing curbside pickup, or the Art Museum, or Amazon. And the Artist Archives, too. Yeah. We have copies. Yes, of course. Sorry. And the Artist Archives. <laughs> Absolutely. Any place you get it is a good place. That's beautiful, Gloria. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you shared that, too. Yes. Okay. And, You're welcome. And, and there's the cover picture. It's right. gorgeous. And it has Gloria's writing in it as well. Um, I actually then have my next question is for you, George. So George, it is a question and it is from Allison. I love the tin, that the Tin Man is heading towards a banana. Can you please talk about the significance of bananas in much of your artwork? Also, why did you name your studio the Flying Banana Studio? <clears throat> That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> the answer to that is in this, is in this book <laughs> called A Flying Banana. But uh, <laughs> it, answers, it answers the question. But uh, the Flying Banana, uh, when I first started doing these paintings, I Doing all these symbols, uh, the red nose, the, the, the glasses, the, the fog. I've just now finally make sure my paintings knew that it's supposed to be funny. So I started putting these bananas flying around because bananas is a, a funny fruit. And uh, so I started putting these things in, in, in my paintings, uh, in uh, these living room paintings that I, I've been doing. And, uh, the different fantasies um, that through the years I, I've done, and uh, uh, it just stuck. And uh, people started recognizing that, that I did that. They saw pain when I'm flying up in the end, they knew that I did it. And uh, and uh, along with the other the other the other elements I put in, put in artwork, and uh, it just stuck. in. for a long time, I, I more and more I thought about it. Uh, Fine banana and kind of catchy, so um, and uh, I've been doing that ever since. I do that, I mean, because you know, my your name out is George Kokar, and uh, I don't want that, but then find something that associates with that uh, name. And uh, the banana stuck, I mean, it's, it's still around. Uh, I don't put the bananas as much in my, in my work anymore. But uh, a lot of times it's kind of funny because I've read reviews where people were talking about my, my paintings and uh, they mentioned the bananas. Like there were no bananas in the painting. So <laughs> it's really stuck. There you go. <laughs> That's actually, and it's perfect because your bandwidth is breaking, but then there's more about bananas in your book as well for people to, to learn about it there too. Where can oh, they yes, get your, oh yeah, definitely. Real quick before you uh, fade out, where can they get your book again, George? Amazon Books. You just Amazon. order it online from Amazon. Gotcha. Just call Amazon and type in my name and the flying banana. And off you come. Check them up. Yep. Perfect. That's thank you, George. And I got one final question, Terry. It's for you, Terry Klausman. Hello. Everybody is fascinated and enamored with your studio. There were many questions. Uh, one was uh, actually from Jim, and he wanted to know how long did it take you to clean up your studio to get it ready for filming. 
<laughs> Actually, it's been like this. You'll uh, really? um, yeah. now preparing for my uh, uh, show at the Bluff Blue Door Gallery. Mm -hmm. It was like a bomb went off in here because it was just, you know, you're just, <laughs> it doesn't matter whatever it takes to get a show going. Um, but uh, no, I try to keep it like this because uh, I do have uh, stuff and I don't want to uh, make it cluttered. Um, I want to try to make it as homey and inviting as, as I can here. Plus, it's it's more efficient to work around. Um, mm -hmm. Once it gets, once you get going and building, you know, all bets are off. Every space can be moved around and, you know, there's nothing holy here as far as like it has to stay put. It, it all gets shoved around. Um, to show uh, the, the artwork behind me, um, this is the gallery area. So all this stuff there for a show will go out in the hallway. And, and that's another thing I'm missing is I'm missing my, I have to build yet a storage facility for my framed work. Um, so no, it, it actually, I try to keep it as neat as possible because there is a bunch of stuff and, and uh, I trip. And you get, you get the final question as well, Terry. The final one was from Jennifer Leach, and she wants to know what is behind the mysterious black curtain or what is going to possibly be behind the mysterious black curtain in your studio? I'm going to have to leave that. Uh, something I think is going to be cool. It's going to be a <laughs> sensory experience, um, and it's in progress. <laughs> a Slow mystery. But still. A mystery. It, it's a mystery, yeah. We'll, we'll have it's to come back go after you it's... put that in and see. There you go. What's well, that, Mindy? I said we'll have to come back after you put that in and photograph it again. Do another please, one. Please, please do, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mindy, I will throw it back over to you. That is all our questions. It was very nice having all you guys here this evening. And here is Mindy Towsley. I, I think Kelly, um, I think Kelly had some artwork that yeah, she wanted I, to share. I just wanted to um share my screen real quick because I thought we should show the pieces that the speakers have in the member show. Um, can you see this? This is a Judy Takis piece. Beautiful. It was for sale. Um, the size is there. Beautiful. This is Gloria Plevin's piece, um, which is part of her Chautauqua series. Um, Hogan's Hut. She's selling this um, framed and unframed. And then we also have George Kokar, the gray piece. And then Terry's, which I love. This is, um, Terry, didn't you say that this was kind of like the piece that you were showing in your studio? Um. Like it's actually the only one I've kind of, I guess, stayed away from the real hot colors. Yeah. So this was uh, jumping with jumping in with both feet, you know, and, and uh, um, it's the same size as the the one I did for the holiday treat show. Okay. okay. It was kind of along that lines, and I like working smaller. It was um, just to see how things would work out, and I was I was kind of happy with it. And thank you for the compliment. And then this is Herb's piece, which is, I believe, sold, right, Mindy? Yes. Beautiful, yes. So, um, yeah, I just wanted, I thought we should share those. And um, you can go on to the Artist Archives website and email if anybody's interested in purchasing any of those. That's all I had to say. Okay, well, I think it's eight o'clock, so uh, we're ending at a good time. Um, I'd like to thank all of our artists. Thank you so much for participating. Um, the artists have gone through a couple of hours of practicing to get this thing to where it went as well as it did. So um, thanks very much for your time and your efforts, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, artists are often asked to donate their time for free for things. And so um, all I can say is if anybody's interested in buying any of that work from the member show that belongs to these artists or any other work that you can find on their websites or their Facebook pages, or you want to contact them, um, please do it. Um, everybody needs all the support they can get during this time of uh, sequestering. Um, as several of the artists mentioned, you know, they're in shows that aren't being seen. Um, I know a lot of shows have moved online. And so, you know, that, that's an issue too for artists. 
Um, great work, you guys. It was fabulous. Before we go, I do want to thank uh, some of our funders. I'd like to thank the Ohio Arts Council for their funding of the archives. I'd also like to thank the voters of Cuyahoga County through Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, uh, the George Gunn Foundation, the Cleveland Foundation, the Zufall Foundation. Mm -hmm. I'd especially like to thank the members whose work is in the members show right now. Um, members are fabulous supporters for the archives. There is over 108 pieces in the members show, and I really do hope that we get to reopen so you guys can come and see the show in person. We're going to really try hard to do that. Now, if you like this webinar, tune in again next Friday night at 7 o'clock. Um, again, it's free. We've got another five artists who are in the show who are going to present their work to you. And um, thanks so much, everybody, for coming and joining us. Um, this is, this is kind of the new norm, so um, we're all having fun with it. So thanks again, everybody. Everybody say goodbye. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bye, Gloria. Bye, everyone. Thanks for her. coming. See you, Judy. Everybody. See you, Megan. Thanks, see everybody. See you, George. See you, Gloria. See you, Bye. Mindy. Bye. Who hangs up first? We I do. All I'm going to hang up for everybody. This is it. <laughs> Bye. Bye.